Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixel Perfect. How are you doing? I hope you're having a great day and making it an incredible one. Today we're going to be talking about 13 of the biggest mistakes beginners keep making in Photoshop and how do we fix them. Trust me, some of these mistakes are something I find myself doing even after 15 years of using Photoshop. So if you do any one of these mistakes, doesn't mean that you are a beginner. So without any further ado, let's get started. The first blunder is not flattening all the layers as a separate layer or a stamp visible layer in the end. Have a look at this. So here we have a gradient, right? Simple gradient. On top of that, we have some text. Notice that at the top we have some yellow and at the bottom we have a purple-ish blue, right? If I go to File, Export, Export As, if the size is the same, there is no issue. But if you try to resize it to, for example, 1000 by 1000 pixels, have a look, the gradient goes haywire. So Photoshop is not able to capture the entire gradient while resizing. Similarly, if you choose any scale, for example, 10%, the gradient is something different. If you choose a different scale, for example, 75%, the gradient is something different. And this happens not only with gradients, but a lot of other adjustments and effects in Photoshop that is hard to pinpoint. That is why I recommend that after you have created your design or composite or whatever that is, create a stamp visible layer at the top. Here's how to do it. Press Control, Alt, Shift and E. Command, Option, Shift and E on a Mac. This creates a merged layer of everything you see in the canvas right now. So now when you go to File, Export, Export as, no matter how much you resize, it's not going to be an issue. So let's set the scaling to 10%. See, it's the same. Let's set the width and the height to 1000 by 1000. It is the same, no issue. The second mistake is not using this special keyboard shortcut for copy and paste. So here we have a thumbnail that I had designed and here we have another thumbnail also from one of the previous videos. Now let's say I want to copy this Photoshop logo from right here and paste it at the exact same position right here. How do we do that? So if we go back to this document and just let's scroll down to the Photoshop logo, let's select that, let's copy it by pressing Ctrl or Command C and then we're going to go to this one and paste it, Control or Command V. It is pasting in the center. We don't want that. We want it in the exact same position. How do we get it? First of all, let's delete it. Let's drag it to the trash can or press the delete key. Let's go back to the previous document. Copy it the way you usually do. By the way, it is already copied. Control or Command C, same stuff. While pasting, instead of pressing Control or Command V, press Control Shift V. Command Shift V. See, it is at the exact position. The third mistake I see a lot of artists and photo editors doing, and I get a lot of email about it too, is using the Photoshop beta version for their main work. Please do not. Please use the regular version. Just so you know, you can get Photoshop beta in your Creative Cloud desktop app. Just go to apps. At the top, you will find beta right here. And from here, you can install Photoshop beta. The beta is meant for you to try out to beta test all the new features and the updates before it makes it to the main version. It is just for testing and it may and it will crash at some point. So please use the main version of Photoshop for your important projects and all projects. Beta is just for testing out the new features. And you want to make sure that you're working in the regular version of Photoshop. At the top, it should say Photoshop, not beta. If you open up the beta app, it says beta right here. And also both of those have different icons. The beta has a white background. The regular one has the regular background, which has been there since ages. The fourth mistake I see a lot of new editors doing, and that is overdoing their retouching. Take a look at this. So here in this case, if we zoom in, it looks fantastic. By the way, here is the before and here is the after. But as soon as we zoom out, it looks like it's too much. It is just too soft. It does not look realistic. So in this case, I've done frequency separation. Here's the before. Here is the after. So all we have to do is to decrease the opacity so that it looks natural. Just hover over the opacity text, click and drag to the left. In this case, we're going to keep it to about 60%. That looks natural and nice at the same time. This also applies even if you're using an automatic plugin like Retouch For Me. I highly recommend it, by the way. You can try it out for free. Let's make a copy of the background layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. And let's go to Filter, Retouch For Me, Retouch For Me, Heal to remove all the blemishes. And by the way, if you like the plugin, you can use the promo code to get the highest discount possible. Now, it automatically removed all the blemishes. Of course, you can control its sensitivity, but I'm going to keep it all the way up. You can also choose to make mask, which I always do. Hit apply. 
So in this layer, all we have is the blemish removal. If I just keep this on, see, these are the areas where it removed blemishes. And again, here's the before, here's the after. On top of that, let's press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E to create a stamp visible layer at the top, merged layer of everything that is in the canvas right now. Let's go to filter, retouch for me again and this time choose dodge and burn. This looks fantastic but it can be way too much. You can keep it at 100, choose soft light layer right here and hit apply. This creates a non-destructive overlay. Let's change the blend mode to soft light and let's take a look at the before and after. So here's the before, here's the after. It's pretty fantastic and looks natural too. If you want it to be more natural, I would decrease the opacity just like it. So the idea is just dial down a little bit when it comes to retouching. Mistake number five is using the eraser tool for God knows what reason. So here we have an overlay. I'm just going to copy it by pressing Ctrl or Command A, Ctrl or Command C and paste it right here, Ctrl or Command V. Now we are going to transform it just like so, make it a bit larger. Let us change its blend mode from normal to screen. This looks fantastic, but it doesn't look good right here. So the general assumption would be taking the eraser and just erasing it like this. It does look ugly, but even if you take the soft round brush and try to erase it like this, it's gone. But what if you want to resize it later? So if you select this and then if you press Ctrl or Command T and then you move it around, that area is absolutely gone. You cannot get it back. So this looks really, really weird. And it's gone from the layer as well. It's permanently gone. So instead of using the eraser, do this instead. Click on the mask button right here. Now inside of a mask, black hides and white shows. So if you choose the brush and paint with black, those areas would be hidden. And if it's white, those areas will show. Since the mask is entirely white, you are able to see everything. So we're going to take the brush tool, make sure the mask is selected, take black as the foreground color. You can always press X to toggle between the foreground and the background colors. And now let's paint here with black, just like so. Right now the advantage is, even if I wanted to get it back, I can. And it's not harming the layer. If I paint that back in white, let's press X, make the foreground color white. Now if I paint it back, we can get it back. So use layer masks when you can instead of erasers. Mistake number six is using adjustments directly on the layer. Let's say we wanted to brighten this. We wouldn't go to image, adjustments, brightness, contrast, and from then on brighten it right here and increase the contrast. Looks great for now, hit OK. And later if you think, oh my gosh, I think the brightness and the contrast is way too much and I want to dial it down. There is no way you can get those controls back. You would have to undo and redo the whole thing again. So instead of applying adjustments directly to the layers, use adjustment layers. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then let us choose brightness contrast. I usually use curves, but we're talking about beginners here. Let's increase brightness right here. That's fantastic. And maybe a bit of contrast like this. Also an advantage here is that adjustment layers come with a mask. So you can select the mask right here. Let's create a gradient. Let's choose the gradient tool and choose a gradient from white to black. And we're going to choose a radial gradient right here. And let's draw in a gradient. Isn't that fantastic? I love it. So here's the before, here's the after. See that glow? So use adjustment layers instead of applying adjustments directly onto the layers. You have all the controls right now, so you can double click right here, change the brightness, change the contrast, turn it off, turn it on, play with the mask, all of the controls. Mistake number seven is doing everything on the same layer or doing everything just with the background layer. Please don't. So let's say you want to remove a few stuff. So let us choose the remove tool right here. And let's say this is distracting to you. So we're going to remove this and then we're going to remove this as well, this area right here, branch, gone. But what if you wanted to get it back? There is no way we can unless we undo everything or redo everything. Also, there is no provision to decrease the opacity if we wanted to. So instead of doing all this, let's go back to how it was. Always first create a new layer by clicking on this button. And then you want to check sample all layer so that it's sampling the layer beneath. And then you want to remove whatever you want to remove. So let's say I remove this one. Now this layer, will just have that replaced area. So you can erase a part of it, you can keep it, you cannot keep it, turn it off, turn it on, it's all up to you. Let's say we also removed this part carefully 
like this. And this looks a bit odd, so I'm gonna try that again right here as well. And now you have the provision to do whatever you want. Let's say you wanna keep this for now. So you can create a mask and take the brush and just hide that area to get it back. You can also erase it. You can also decrease the opacity. You have so many options. Mistake number eight is not converting important image layers into smart objects to maintain a resolution. So let's say here we have this image. Fantastic image, right? And we copy it by pressing Ctrl or Command A, Ctrl or Command C, and we paste it right here in this thumbnail. Now the resolution is relatively low, and I pasted it directly, just like so. Now, of course, it is very high resolution, that image, and we resize it without thinking about anything. Resized it just like so, hit enter or return. Now this is of a lower resolution now. Even if I try to size it back up, see? we lost all the details and this image had a lot of details so again there's a mistake we did let's make it even smaller like so hit enter or return press ctrl or command t back again and then we resize it again see we have lost even more details that is why i always recommend whenever you paste something and it pastes in its full resolution always right click on this layer and choose convert to smart object right now if you press ctrl or command t resize it even if you make it really really small hit enter or return press ctrl or command t again and make it large again you are not going to lose any detail so use smart objects when you can to maintain the quality the next mistake is not converting to srgb when exporting for web many a times i've heard complaints and you might have experienced this as well that you have created something in photoshop but when you begin to upload it to instagram or facebook the colors change. Now this is most likely to happen especially if you're working with Pro Photo RGB color space. So right now this document is in Pro Photo RGB and usually this happens when you take a photo from Lightroom to Photoshop to have more freedom. But just as soon as you go to File, Export, Export As, the colors are absolutely gone. Here's how to fix it. Scroll down and you want to check Convert to sRGB. Just as soon as you do that, it's all going to be fine. You can easily upload it to social media. It's not going to be an issue. Power lines can go off. Your computers can crash. Anything can happen. Prepare for the worst. And that is why it is important to always turn on autosave. Go to Photoshop, Settings, and File Handling. On Windows, it would be under Edit, Preferences, File Handling. In here, you have the option to turn on Automatically Save Recovery Information. You want to make sure that this is checked at all times. And you can choose the duration. I'm going to choose five minutes, which means that at every five minutes, it's going to automatically save the recovery information. So in case Photoshop crashes and you start it again, so it should have the recovery file loaded and it is usually loaded, but there are also times when it is not. So another precaution is to do human autosave. As you continue to work on your project, always have the habit to press Ctrl or Command S at all times at every intervals. So that way it is a foolproof method to never lose your work because there has been times when autosave has not worked for me. Mistake number 11 is not looking at repeating patterns after we remove something. So in this case, let us create a brand new layer first. Let's pick the remove tool and let's say we removed this particular area, like so. And whenever we use any of the healing tools or any tool to remove something, you will often see repeating patterns. So here, is a repetition of this one. Here's another repetition. It's important that we break this repeating pattern, otherwise it becomes so evident. So let's remove one of these and then edit one of these in this way. So you can remove one of these or replace it with something else. Be creative. The idea is to just remove the repeating patterns. The next mistake is starting your document with a low resolution and this restricts your options. So let's go to File, New and let's say you decided the width to be 1000 and the height to be, let's say, 600. Now, this is a very low resolution. You might exactly need this dimension, but you can always reduce the image size later. So let's say you created it and then you took the brush and you painted something. But if you zoom in, it is not that detailed. It will pixelate. And also later on, if you need a 4K version of this, you're stuck. It is way easier and possible to reduce the image quality and the image size later than increasing it. So always start with a higher resolution when you can. And the last mistake is saving in the right format, both for exporting and editing later as well. When we are new to Photoshop, we spend a lot of time designing and editing something and we think this is the final one. Let's export it by going to File 
export, export as, or whatever method that you use to export it as a JPEG. And you just click on export, save it as a JPEG and close the document. And then we close Photoshop and we're like, oh my gosh, I have just this JPEG image that's also very low quality. If you wanted to change the text, there is no way you can do it now because this is just a baked in JPEG. So along with exporting as a JPEG, it's also important that we save it as a PST. By going to file, save as, choose the name right here, click on save, hit OK. This gives us the flexibility to open the PST and then change the text to whatever we want. So those were the 13 most common mistakes beginners do. So if you have any mistake in mind which you were doing when you were learning Photoshop or sometimes you find yourself doing all the time, do share in the comments so we can help each other as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Lucky, lucky, lucky me. Uh -oh. lucky, lucky.